Hey, what's going on, guys? It's me, Fang. Just Fang. Hey, I'm gonna make this video, and I'm walking on campus right now. I'm gonna, I just want to say happy 16th birthday, Wizard 101. Um, this video is gonna be the extra credits video because uh, in the iceberg we do a few things that are um, having to do with Wizard 101 and some references. So get, get ready for that. The third part of the iceberg, um, and we got some collabs with Firestarter, Carly, Kevin, and Ninja Matt. So it should be pretty good, and let's get right into it. See you later. And today we're doing a little bit of a different thing. Finally, another part of the iceberg, um, the long-awaited sequel of a sequel. Um, I'm in my college dorm room or apartment kind of thing. Um, so a little bit of a different setting. The camera's kind of weird because I don't have my tripod with me. Um, and I'm holding my mic stand even though I probably shouldn't. <laughs> but today we are going to be doing the iceberg. Um, I got a few friends to help me out with that. Um, Carly, Kevin, Ninja Matt, and Firestarter. So they'll be sprinkled around the video for certain topics. Um, but let's get straight into it. Actually, with Firestarter first with the five boxes events. Well, Firestarter, take it away. Do you ever wish to go back in time? Do you ever wish that your two favorite games did a collaboration? Well, those wishes were made true for many by Kingsdale's five boxes of men as you travel back in time to Skull Island in order to thwart the Maester's plans of world domination. You go back in time to before the pirate storyline begins in order to free Captain Butchbeard and Mr. Gondry from the clutches of the Armada and the Red Claw Gang so they could go and free the pirate which leads to the start of the Pirate 101 storyline. I think it's really cool that the wizard played a role in the start of Pirate and as a fan of primarily Wiz, I like this crossover a lot. Really cool event overall and I wish KI did more things like this. Also please help, Fang is keeping me here against my will. Alrighty, thank you Firestarter for that very informative section about the five boxes event uh he'll be coming back a little bit later to talk about the old ones the old one um i, I don't remember but we have the next one on the list is elbion which elbion um I'm pretty sure sam johnson talked about a little bit um it's the scrapped basically marleybone skyway um it's home to the poorer members of marleybone like the cats foxes frogs and scruffy dogs apparently <laughs> and Elbion is literally like the crime hub um of Marleybone and that's where just everyone who is a little downtrodden and a little devious I was I was trying to do devious but um goes um and it's where the radicals um plot their attacks against Marleybone's current government very very cool next one is the old Hangem Jail. So the old Hangem Jail is in Cool Ranch, in the Haunted Skyway. Pretty sure it's um, part of a little dungeon, um, and it is the only place in the Spiral that still has a noose. Very weird um, that in a kids' game there's a noose. It is called Old Hangem Jail, but you know, it's still, it's still a kids' game. But yeah, so that's interesting. So next is the Long Bridge which the Long Bridge is from Avery's Court to, uh, you know, the Skull Mountain, Skull Island kind of thing um, with the Trogies and Bonnie Ann. Bonnie, I'm still, Bonnie Ann is still sitting in my, uh, in the basement. I forgot. Dang it. Okay. But basically, you used to be able to walk a lot further through the bridge. The um, instance zone where you get teleported to the other side used to be way down before, so you used to walk on it, which would be cool. I mean, it doesn't really matter, but... You know, I always thought, why can't I just walk across the bridge? Why is there an instant zone right there? But yeah, very cool. Next, this one I feel like is kind of common. People know this. Um, is Alpha Ratbeard. So uh, picture on the screen, obviously. Ratbeard had this goofy uh, hat in Alpha. Obviously, I wasn't playing during Alpha. But, you know, he had this weird hat. Um, and that's about it. I, I don't think he had any specific stats that are differently. Um, but he just had a very weird looking i think it was his final promotion appearance um don't quote me on that but very very strange um, so let's get on to the next one Alrighty, this next one's a little weird um it's the cutthroat companion is a dwarf now compared to all the other cutthroats in the game um this companion is very short <laughs> um i don't know why but um the theory the running theory is which i didn't know this is a thing um, that he was cast out by the rest of the cutthroats, leading him to join the pirates. So kind of like a revenge story, because he was just a little guy. And now he's going to help you out and defeat Finn Dorsal. 
Okay, this next one is like my favorite thing ever. Just the pettiness of the Pirate 101 community. Level 71 Bonnie Ann. Yeah, you heard that right. So when you recruit Bonnie Ann, she recruits a level higher than you are. So someone with cheat engine and macros for days, probably. Um, <sighs> AFK'd killing Troggies until they reached level 70. And then turned in that Bonnie Ann quest and got a level 71 Bonnie Ann. It's not much better than a level 70, but they said, you know what, pirate? You, you suck. I'm petty. I'm going to get a level 71 Bonnie Ann. So someone did it, and that is great for them. <laughs> Personally, um, I don't think it's worth it, but, you know, to each their own, right? The next one is the Ninja Pig Musketeer Companion. Now, we know about the Ninja Pig Companion, obviously, but the Ninja Pig Musketeer Companion is a little different. Um, it was planned to be obtainable at some point. Um, Atmoplex has a post on him. Of course he does, because I love the Atmoplex. Um, not supposed to be saying that, but I don't care. I love the Atmoplex. Great leaker. Um, and great just information about Power 101 as well. I am glazing the Atmoplex. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, so apparently this was originally a Musketeer Ninja Pig companion, and it was obtainable at one point. But, um, or it was planned to be, sorry, obtainable at one point. So it doesn't look like it was ever obtainable, but some kind of cool companion that just no one can have so cool <laughs> Alrighty, this next one is dark more and this is going to be by ninja matt so let's get straight to ninja matt's section the dark more project was a fan project made from the Am amplex which is a leaker who leaks updates for both 101 games i find it cool how the Am amplex kind of predicted that the mirror scene after the cane fight was a lie and the Armada, Armada used it to get you off the track to find El Dorado when Ki, when Ki also made it like that. Even even though everyone everyone assumed that the that the mirror scene was was um fake faked from Kane and and his crew, it was really cool how they predicted that. And I liked how they made the pirate fight the the pirate's mom's crew. That was really cool in my opinion. And I really liked how they handled the reunion. It was nice how Dead Mike was worried about talking to the mom since Mike failed to avenge her. And how the mom was also kind of mad at the pirate for starting the Marley, Bo Marley Bone War. There's a lot more things I could talk about, but that, that's just the highlights I, w I wanted to say. Alrighty, Ninja Matt, thank you so much for that. That rhyme, that was cool. Um, and let's get on to the next one, which is the Life Fountain Companions Revival. So, everyone knows Miracle Mitch, you know, that funny guy who steals your gold to heal your companions. Um, before that, they could just be revived through a life fountain. Now, I don't know the, how this mechanic used to work. Um, I don't know how new Miracle Mitch relatively is. I mean, I I started playing back again in 2020, so um, he was still there. Um, but apparently, you could just revive your companions through the life fountain, which kind of seems like a great thing, but also you need to... Turns out you, can't ha you can have too much gold, and, you know, that's a good way to get players to spend their gold is uh, when your companions die, you have to actually, you know, either... Hit, take that hit because they're wounded or just, you know, spend the gold. Okay, so this one, I think this, this might be like a fan thing. I mean, may, I, I honestly don't know. It's called Gatorvania, and it's like Eldorado. I'm just going to read exactly what Clock has down on here because I have no clue what this is. Also, shout out Clock, person who made this uh, iceberg. I appreciate it. Um, this is a comment on my Reddit post, so here is what the person said. Gatorvania is said to be or is said to have been thrown out of the spiral but came back. It is an unknown it is unknown how a world gets thrown out of the spiral based on what we know about El Dorado, which by all accounts has undergone the same thing. That's in all caps. This means Gator Gatorvania is probably one of the most important worlds if we are able to get to El Dorado, as the map is somewhat useless since El Dorado keeps shifting places. Gatorvania holds the knowledge of how storm gates tether to worlds and is the key to reaching El Dorado. Y you have your own interpretation of that. I don't even know if that's a real thing, if it's fan-made. Um, let me know in the comments if you know anything about Gatorvania. Ooh. Okay, next one. Next one is the Skyway turret bosses. Now, this one is those... I'm pretty sure the rookie made a video on this a little while back. Basically, there's like the stationary turrets, and they just kind of shoot at you. It's like ships, but they can't move. Um, I think they look pretty cool, but I don't really know why it's the steep on the iceberg. But they exist. They're, they have them in Cool Ranch, which is like that cool fort thing. Mushu, which I don't really remember what it looks like in Marleybone. Which I think it's like a tall tower. They're all kind of tall towers, but um, very cool. Yeah. Next is the level 95 health doubloon. And it was given away in a KI Live code and is currently the highest level doubloons 
ever obtainable to the player base. Now, I always get like those level 75s and I'm like, ah, oh, the, the level cap. But level 95 is crazy. Like, seeing something that's level 95 in Pirate, like I've been playing Wiz and I just got to level 95. Get, getting that in Pirate would be crazy. So, very, very cool, very interesting. This next one's kind of funny. It's the three year curse. Um, the curse that Pirate had for a while for only getting an update every three years. Um, think from 2018 to 2021. Um, but then with Sinbad, you know, constant updates, that's been broken. So that's really good to see. Obviously, there was the curse, broke it. We're getting more consistent updates. Are they the greatest updates? I'll let you be the judge of that. But, you know, consistent updates, it's good that we broke the curse. Okay, so next is Captain Kid Companion. We all know Captain Kid. Um, he apparently in the files has something where it indicates that it's a companion. I don't really know too much about in-game files, but apparently he was supposed to be a companion at some point throughout your adventure, which would be very interesting. I mean, just getting story companions like that, like kind of like the Monkey King, would be very, very cool. So, very interesting. Valencia City is the next one on our list. An island seen in Valencia, which is fully modeled and can still be accessed through a ship glitch. That's cool. An, an area that I assume is not accessible, but with a ship glitch, you can actually get on it. Um, I'm going to try and find footage of that uh, in editing, and I'll let you know if I find anything. Um, that's very interesting. I'd like to see what that looks like. So, Editor Brendan, put that on the screen. If not, put a picture or something. Come on, you got this. Come on, you got this. Okay, so the next one is the April Fools. Ha ha ha, like fool, you know, from... Valencia Part 1, and um, the prison thing. Um, April Fool's eye patch, and it was given away in a code in 2015, so it's pretty rare. If you got the April Fool's eye patch, shout out to you. All right, so no doubloons. I have no idea what this is. I just see it everywhere, says Clock. If I had to guess, it would probably be a glitch with no doubloons appearing. Well, okay, that makes sense. So whenever you're starting a battle, you just got no doubloons when you actually have doubloons. Um... Not really something specific. Um, it it's really just seems like a general glitch that happens. Um, which that would kind of suck, because I feel like sometimes doubloons can be really helpful in fights, like if you're actually doing a serious boss fight. But, womp womp, no doubloons. Okay, so random companions. Apparently, random companions used to be the only options for fights. That sounds horrendous, because I like making my little setup. I know people have done challenges where they do random companions only, and that's hard. So if it was, at one point, the only thing there, that sounds horrible. That No, 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 no. Okay, this one's probably one of my favorites. The Emperor isn't saved yet in Pirate. So basically, in Wiz, spoiler alert, which that this came out in 2008, so womp womp if you haven't played it yet. Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, basically, you wake up the Emperor to get the spiral key door for Dragon Spire, I think. Um, but pirate canonically happens after which you could kind of say firestarters part with the five boxes kind of said that um basically you technically woke up the emperor and then you saved uh some kind of like conditions so then the pirate could you know go into deacon's ship and then butchbeard could save him um but basically the emperor should be aw like awake in mushu but uh in pirate but we see um like, I don't know if it's a flashback, but the guy who gets cut down by the ninja pigs, he talks about how the emperor, like, Malastar put a, which that's a cool Wizard 101 reference, Malastar put a spell, or he, I think he's a Carl, they called him a dark sorcerer or something, put a spell on the emperor, and he's been sleeping for blah, 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 blah. So I, I don't know. That seems like a convoluted, like, plot line, but, you know, the MC in Wiz should have woken up the emperor, so it's just kind of confusing in that sense. Okay, so next is Diego and Roberto. So they have different models from Wiz, but they have the same name and same general design. So it looks like they have the same name. They're both like, um, what are they, unicorns? Yeah, um, but they have different models. So I know Diego's the like dual master in Wiz, and then Roberto's the guy you fight in his mom's basement or something. <laughs> so that's funny, but uh, interesting. Okay, so next is the used to be fightable crawlies in Trader's Cave, and they were notorious for sucking people into fights. So I think in those little two areas when you first walk in, like the two little coves, um, there used to be crawlies there, and you used to get pulled like crazy. I couldn't find any footage of this. I kept trying to look um, at like old like Blaze Life Hammer playthroughs, but it must have been like way at the start. But people kept complaining, and 
Um, then they removed it. So good job, King's Isle. You did something good there. <laughs> okay, so next is the Battle Angel Hat and Boots. So these were scrapped items that were still in the files. You're seeing a picture of them right now. Editor Brendan does his job. Um, and they have, uh, and there's two sets of boots because they have boy girl variants. So yeah, very interesting. I love seeing scraps like gear design. I feel like at that point, just kind of release it in like a future thing. I don't know, uh, just me, but very interesting. Okay, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. This is on the official wiki. I'm almost 100% sure. I pulled a screenshot. Don't remember where I pulled the screenshot, but I pulled the screenshot. The orange. Yeah, orange, red, and black windstones. Um, <laughs> clock, this is funny. In parentheses, you can find where they lead. I'm too tired to look it up because it's 3 a.m. Thank you, Clock, for all your contributions on these videos. I appreciate it. So I looked it up, and it's crazy. I want to make a whole video about this and, like, theories and stuff because this is so cool. So the orange windstone is the most boring one, obviously. And it is taking you from Mushu to Valencia. Very interesting. Um, it's still, you know, a pathing. Uh, not really useful, but maybe we would go back from Mushu to Valencia isn't I swear we do that or maybe we like because I remember we sneak into like the Mushu Valencia part to go to Valencia part two uh, or is that Aquila I really don't remember but that is what the red or the orange windstone would do the red windstone is pretty cool it would take you from Skull Island to Valencia and Valencia to Andalusia Skyway which is what like a new Skyway that we've never heard of and have no information on. Um, that's just cool and probably scrapped at this point, but it's cool to theorize. And finally, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. This seems like some kind of like fever dream or like fan thing. Finally, the Black Windstone, which takes you from Wizard City to El Dorado. Now, both of those are huge. Wizard City from Wizard 101? Or what? El Dorado, the city of gold. I don't want to talk too much on it because I want to make a whole video on this, but this is the coolest thing like I've ever seen in my life. I was like, what? So very cool. Let's continue to the next one, but that is super cool. So next one is shortened cool ranch. Um, many dungeons and bosses got reduced health and cut fights. Um, I don't really know much about the cut fights, but I know how they did um, reduced health for everything up until the start of Mushu's when they get it back, kind of like for like a player curb um, to help newer players, which I like. Um, but it means Mushu is even more brutal because it's just normal hardness, which you're not used to, but you know, you got to get used to it. So yeah, very cool. Okay. This next one is the negative one stats glitch. Um, and it's a glitch that shows all other player stats being negative one. I'm pretty sure that's when a player teleports out of an area and you click on them and then like it just, the data gets all weird and it just shows negative one. I've had that happen before. I'm pretty sure. Um, interesting glitch. Okay. This one's sad. Book 20. This would have been El Dorado. You know, you, you think about it, and you think about a game, and you think about an endpoint, and that endpoint was always El Dorado and Pirate. It wasn't some kind of, like, oh, I'm going to go off, shoot, kill Kane, and I'm all good, and going to go to Sinbad. No, it was El Dorado. You're going to find your parents there. You're going to get unlimited riches. You know, it's the city of gold. That's the, that's the, the shining city on the hill, El Dorado. And the fact that we have definitive proof that there was a, like I said, the callback, the Black Windstone, the Ghost Eldorado, that Book 20 would have been Eldorado, it just hurts my soul to know that they had plans to create this Eldorado. And we might never get there, to be honest with you. Like, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, but I've been making Pirate 101 content for four years, and seeing how this company is just kind of... It makes me question if we're ever going to get to that Eldorado point and if we do get to El Dorado is it just going to be super underwhelming because they don't know how to make a skyway I, I always got to complain a little bit in my videos and that's where I'm going to complain and it's it's a down it's it's sad but you know what can you do so let's get on to the next one okay so the next one is Kane's robe and I'll have Cowardly Kevin talk about it um super cool items so let's get right on to that every hardcore pirate 101 player knows Kane the infamous leader of the armada and you've likely seen someone with Kane's mask. Those lucky good-for-nothing losers. Do you know how many times I've run that dungeon for absolutely nothing? I deserve that mask way more than you. 
But what you may not have known is that he used to drop more than just the mask. Kane's robe, also known as the Gorizzi mantle, was originally dropped in the test room. King's Isle support accidentally gave this item to a player, and as far as anyone knows, it cannot be obtained from any other source. This robe was for level 70 swashbucklers and gave 13 agility and 22 armor, granting the ability Assassin Stride and an increase to your pirate's base agility. Thank you, Mr. Coward, for your awesome segment. Let's get straight back to our original program. All right, so I don't know why this is this low on the iceberg. I feel like everyone knows about this. Uh, the Nefarious 6 badge, um, where you are fighting the Nefarious uh, 5, and then you hit the dragon in the middle of the field, and you become evil. And then, um, you know, you fight and you win, and then you get the cool badges where it's um, red eyes. And it's known as one of the most difficult badges in the game. I mean, if you're soloing, maybe, and you keep all your gear on, but I feel like it's pretty easy at this point. Like, easy dubs. I feel like the harder ones would probably be, like, defeat a thousand, whatever. Like, the you know, the max, like, defeat ones takes a lot longer, but very interesting. So next is Savella's Stage. It went through a redesign. I'm going to try and pull a pick on that, um, but just trust me. Trust clock that it went through a redesign. Okay. Man, I remember this. This was sad. September 2019 newsletter. A newsletter saying Pirate will be receiving no new updates. I remember watching the Blaze Lifehammer video where he said this is his last his last Pirate 101 content and he was in Cool Ranch and he was saying, yeah guys, Pirate 101 not getting any more updates. I'm not going to make any more content on it. And I was just like so heartbroken and that was so sad. And, you know, I do this on Kings Out a lot, but they did, you know, stick up. They they updated the game. You know, they're still updating the game. Let's just get it going. Let's keep it keeping on. And I keep forgetting that, you know, there was a lot of a, a lot more bleaker of an outcome, which is just no updates for the rest of the time. And at least we're getting something. So we can be thankful, but we can also be critical about the updates. So a little bit of both. Alrighty, so the last one. And you know who gets to do the honors? Firestarter 101. Um, he's going to be talking about the old one because um, he's a whiz head and he loves Wizard 101. So get right on to that. There's also the old one, a character wizards are all too familiar with. Rumored to be second only to Spider and Raven in terms of power, he could be seen as one of the most powerful beings in the Spiral before he met his end in Caramel. He appears in almost every single puppet show in Pirate in a squid form, and though his original form may be gone in the Wiz universe, I'm excited to see if him and the illustrious Yasunoko Cabal have any lingering effects on the story of Pirate going forward. Will the old one have any relevance in the Pirate's journey? Or could Dazine, the one who ended him, appear as an obstacle for the Pirate? Only time will tell to answer these questions. Alrighty, thank you Firestarter, thank you Ninja Matt, thank you Cowardly Kevin, links to all their channels in the description. That is going to do it for the this iceberg video. Um, we're going to get to tier 4 soon enough. Um, and I think there's one more after that. Um, and then I will combine it all into one big video. So you can watch it all in order. So if you're watching the big video, uh, you probably won't even hear this outro. But maybe you will. Um, so I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Um, we'll get those iceberg videos out for you. All right. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Okay, go ahead. Bye.